Morning. Welcome to another Friday reading vlog. There's probably going to be a lot of wincing. I haven't been very well this week at all, actually. I've been suffering with tummy pain for months. It is under investigation. I've been referred to gynae. I've had an ultrasound. I'm waiting for a few tests to come back and stuff like that. But this week, it's it's really ramped up. Um, so I haven't been at work. Last night, I said last night, like yesterday, yeah, I went for a walk about five-ish. And I got back and I actually felt all right. I mean, this morning it's hurting. It always seems to hurt a lot in the morning. But yeah, so it might be a little bit wincy. <laughs> A bit this, mm. but yeah, I am having it investigated, and hopefully, we'll get the energy back up to where it needs to be. Because I'm a bit fed up with just feeling like this all the time. And when people say to me, "How are you?" I say, "Oh, you're yeah, still in pain," because I'm in pain all the time. But anyway, it's Friday. It's a busy Friday because the kettle's boiling. So I don't know how much of this you'll be able to hear. I'll take you into the other room while the kettle boils and then we can have a chat. My hair, that's part of what's happening today. Hello, baby. Come up and say hello. Oh, I need to do a few stretches, I think. So, yeah, it's Friday and not any Friday. It's my nan's 80th birthday. We're going out for dinner for her birthday tonight, which is why I am glad I'm feeling a little bit better because earlier this week I was like, I don't even think I'm going to be able to go for nan's dinner. I've done her an 80 cross stitch. I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> it's this. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. It looks lovely. It's like a floral pattern. I bought the pattern from Etsy. First of all, I bought the 70 pattern from Etsy for my auntie. So it was her 70th birthday. She's got lots of big, big birthdays this year. Um, don't attack mummy's foot. Um, and she was so happy with it. I thought I'm gonna do the 80 one for my nan. So yeah, so I've, I've got the frame all ready to go. And um, I just need to finish that today. So that is the main thing that needs finishing today. But another thing is that I've got my hair cut. I've got my hair cut at 10 o'clock this morning. You smell like You don't want to be. I wish you just liked laps. Do you like that? Do you like that? You do sort of like that. <laughs> got my hair cut. My, my nan also uses the same hairdresser as me. It was, also, it's a surprise tonight, so she hasn't got any idea. Um, my nan uses the same hairdresser as me, and it was supposed to be at nine o'clock, but they've shifted me to 10 so they can fit my nan in, but I'm going to get these blonde bits dyed out, so I'm gonna be all ginger for two reasons. First reason is that I feel like they're getting a bit scraggy towards the end. And second reason, why are you being cute for with one eye closed? No biting! I just hear that the kettle's boiled, so let's go back and make tea. Yeah, I feel like they're getting a bit scrap. Well, they definitely are. Look, they used to be like a whole. Look how look how much of hair there is at the top compared to at the bottom. Um, but also because I feel like it will be cheaper to maintain a head of fully red hair, um, and I won't need to get it done as often. And as I keep saying, it's all about saving money this year. So that's part of it. So yeah. And then I've got to get back. Record. No, record, not record. Finish the cross stitch. And we've got to be at the restaurant, which is a restaurant I'm quite excited to go to because it's a restaurant that is, you won't believe this, walkable from my house. Um, so we've got to be there at five to six. My nan just thinks she's going out for dinner with my cousin. So I think she's going to be ever so surprised and I think she's going to be really pleased. So we've got that today. So the main things are finish the cross stitch, get my hair done, manage the old pain <laughs> and um, go for my nan's surprise birthday party. So I don't have to be, like I said, haircuts at 10, 10 past nine now. David's in the shower, so I can't get at the moment. So I'm gonna go and have my drink, finish my, finish my tea, read a bit of my book, and then get ready to go and have my hair done. And then when I get back from my hair done, I'm looking gorgeous. That's when we'll go through the books and the stuff for today. 
because I imagine there's going to be quite a lot of audiobook listening to in order to get that cross stitch done. I'm back and my hair is looking fresh. I was a bit, I've just been picking up Daphne and I'm covered in Daphne fluff. I was a bit sad about going to the hairdressers because I was a bit sad about getting rid of my blonde bits but in the spirit of saving a bit of money by hopefully not having to go back to the hairdressers as much because now it's all just one colour and maybe eventually putting a box dye on this myself um, I thought no I'll get rid of the blonde because they began looking a bit ratty around the edges as well but yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm pleased with it it looks really nice I'm really really pleased with it so yes home went and posted Jen's birthday present which I've been saying I was going to do for literal months and I haven't and picked up free books from the library um, and then I need to have a real good well the plan is, is I think I'm going to do an hour well, I've got to eat something because I'm starving I'm going to do an hour on the cross stitch listening to Babel just to see how I get on oh no let's pick everything first and then let me talk about the day right shall I show you the library books we're doing this all last about tip but we'll do it so I picked up Yerba Buena from uh, by Lena Nina Lacour. I picked up Land of Milk and Honey by C. Pam Zhang. I'm a bit, I don't know whether or not I'm going to love this because I really didn't like how much of these hills is gold, so we'll see. And then I picked up Blackouts by Justin Torres. Like Torres from um, Bring It On. So, pop these over here because I've got different piles of books for different libraries. And if anybody else was to come in, they wouldn't know what was going on, but I know what's going on. And let's think about the books that we're going to read today and then I'll eat something and then we'll do an hour's worth of cross stitch and see where we are look at this beautiful girl oh no don't like that that's okay that's okay oh, the old sit down wince um so I'm currently reading Family Meal by Brian Washington I'm almost halfway through this I only picked it up yesterday um I'm enjoying it, it's very readable, um, however, it, <laughs> there is so much, um, I, I'm not saying I have to read, be able to assimilate with somebody who I'm reading a book about, because that is not true, but there is so much promiscuity and drug taking in this, <laughs> I'm feeling almost like I'm reading a, a sci-fi book, <laughs> that's how um, unusual it feels to me, but yeah, so um, I'm reading it very, it, it's very quick and I've almost I've got to a point now where there's actually photos inserted um in this so although it's over 300 pages is it 302 pages um it reads a lot faster than that and some of the some of the paragraph uh, some of the chapters are literally like this as well um it's about a uh, a chap called Cam who's living in uh, Los Angeles um he is um grieving following the death of his partner Kai um and I've just found out how Kai died which was awful um and it's about him making a new life for himself um whilst reconnecting with an old friend of his called tj oh my god definitely looks like so you um and yeah like i said there's so much promiscuity <laughs> drug taken in here it's really hard for me to be like oh okay so that's someone's day-to-day -day life like it's a lot but i'm i'm enjoying it and like i said readable so that's my fiction book I'd also like to have a non-fiction book on the go and we're still reading all my library books because I've got so many books out from the library at the moment like almost 60 because <laughs> I've almost got I've got 30 out from one library and I think one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen out from another library so i've got 50 books here um and yeah so i'd like to read a non-fiction book so the non-fiction books i've got out from the library well i'm keen to read this kate humble a year of living simply um i saw this mentioned on lena's um lena norms who has a patreon um uh, patreon group called the gumption club and there's a facebook group that you can be part of and somebody mentioned that this is very wholesome very sort of like getting back to basics and i'm keen to read it by kate humble uh, the joys of a life less complicated so that's one i've also got doppelganger by naomi klein um that i would like to read about naomi klein finding her doppelganger but i have got a reservation on the um audiobook of this on borrow box which is due to come in in april so do i want to leave it and wait because sometimes i do feel like non-fiction goes in a little bit better when there's that so that's another option another option is emperor of rome by mary beard 
this is so heavy <laughs> so i feel like maybe this might be one that i listen to the audio of but yeah that's also someone then i've got eve uh, how the female body drove 200 million years of human revolution by cat bat bohannon now i think it's going to be this one just because this has got a reservation on it and none of the other ones have so i need to get this back this is also a really really heavy book um so what I might do, because with the non-fiction, I don't tend to just sort of like sit and power through the non-fictions. I tend to read like 100 pages and then I'll leave it for a few days and then maybe I'll go back and read another 100 pages or read a chapter here or read a chapter there. Um, and because they're often heavy and hardback, I don't take them in the bath with me and stuff like that. So I think I might pick this. And then if I don't get to the end of it by the time... Have I got any others? No, I think that is it <clears throat> in terms of non-fiction, yeah. So then if I don't end up finishing this by the time it's due back then many people have told me and i'm very very grateful for you guys telling me all of this um that you can now get 15 hours worth of free audiobooks with your um spotify account spotify free premium account so i'm listening to the end of babel on spotify premium because my reservation on um libby ran out and then i think maybe i could pick up the end of this so I think I might use those 15 hours as a little mop up with if I don't get to finish a book by the time it's due back, because that's going to happen. I've had these books for like three weeks. I've renewed some of them, but some of them won't be able to be renewed. That might be what I use the 15 hours every month for. So yeah, so I think I'm going to pick up Eve then. So the other bits I need. Oh, wincy wincy. It might be time to take more tablets. Um, I will also need a year of wonder to pick the piece of classical music that we're going to listen to. I will need a poem for every wind today to wrap up with a poem. I will need these lit chat questions. And I will also need my my beautiful cat who's being so cute. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, be nice. You're just a hunter, aren't you? You're just a little hunter machine, no biting. We've had to limit the old amount of bite play because um, she bit David's hand and it got a bit scabby and infected. So we're not allowing much bite. <laughs> Look at her go. Um, let me get the reading challenge and then we'll find the question. And I think there's a challenge that I could complete in this video. So, lastly, the cake I'm due to be making today, although I don't know if I'm going to get around to making the cake today, it might be that I make it tomorrow. Or if not, it might be that I make it next week. I'd like to make it today, but it really does depend. Like the, the priority is the cross stitch. Um, is we're due to make the orange and hazelnut cake from uh, the sweet roasting tin. Um, this looks delicious. I love orange in cakes and I love hazelnuts. So this is like a joy for me. So yeah, hopefully we'll get around to doing that today. But if not tomorrow. Also, <laughs> when I'm gonna eat the cake is also a bit of a question mark because we're out for dinner tonight. Tomorrow night we're out for dinner. We're going to Tom and Laura's because oh, it's I'm Tom's. Making cookies tomorrow. And he's making, David's making cookies tomorrow. I mean, this does last for two to three days, so I could always eat. I mean, I'll eat the cake for breakfast if I need to, but there we go. Right, so before we finish off with the, no, let's do the question now. So the question of today's Yeah, oh, no, there's one more left in there. Oh, there's a few more left in there. No, no, there's one more. So today's question, we're really getting to the end of these questions. I can't believe, just to think we had 50 of these to start with, is, is there a book you've read? No, that's not true. Is there a book you've never read, but tell people you have? Is there a book you've never read, but tell people you have? that's a great question and I feel like maybe that question feels familiar to me and I wonder if I've answered it um during a Q&A or something like that but yeah would love to hear your answers for that I can already think of one is there a book you've never read but tell people you have and I th why um and I think I've mentioned it on this channel before so you may well know what the answer is to that and then this lovely little collection of challenges book challenges that Jen made me there's one in here that is about reading a book where you've loved the author's work before. And where is it? 
Okay, read a book by an author whose work you have loved before. So I am listening to the audiobook of Babel, which is a book that I've read and loved before. It's my second favourite book of the year last year, and also by R.F. Quang. And I also read um, Yellow Face by R.F. Quang last year, which was also one of my favourite books of the year. So I definitely think that counts, even though it's a reread. Um, read a book by an author whose work you have loved before. So if I do finish it today or tomorrow, dependent on where this, oh, I feel like I know what this is. This feels like it could be a pin, which is exciting. Um, then I will get to open this little, little treatums. So that could be that. So I think the first things first is to make some lunch, because I also haven't had any breakfast, and then read a little bit of family meal and then I'm going to do an hour solid of cross stitch, see where I am after that hour, see if I can factor in making the cake and then finish off the thing. So it's going to be a lot of cross stitching, <clears throat> a lot of listening to audiobooks, but that's the plan. Put my purse away. This is the card I've got my nan. And let's see if we can get some birthday stuff underway. It's half a jacket potato with beans and cheese because we had jacket potatoes for dinner last night and there was one left over. And instead of eating it last night, we said we'd have it today, which is very sensible. And it is hot all the way through. David's just doing himself a bit of bread and butter because he just can't help himself. Let's go. done an hour and time just disappears when you're doing thingy doesn't it David it really does Bob so I've done an hour and this is how far I've got so it's I'm very I'm doing very well however I did have to unpick a bit here which has meant that I'm having to go over some stuff so it's gonna be a little bit trickier than just following a pattern the pattern by the way is on my phone I bought it from Etsy I've also got the 70 of it so I will link them down below um, but yeah I've screenshotted parts of it and yeah, I'm on this bit now. So we carry on, but being two o'clock, could I take a bit of time out to cook, bake the cake, bake the cake, then bake the cake, do a bit more while the cake's baking, and then a little bit more. I don't need to get ready till five, so I've essentially got three hours to bake a cake and finish this. I think it could be done. I've done basically that much in an hour, which is the equivalent maybe here. I mean, some of this is gonna have to go over again. Yeah, I think I can do it. So cool, anyway, let's chat more cack. You can hear the washing on spin, but the cake is in and I've got 30 minutes until it needs taking out. So a 30 minute sesh on this. Chapter 28, where are we? 18 minutes of a chapter left. This much left. What colour am I going to next? Oh, who knows? Oh my God! I finished it. <laughs> I finished it. 
here it is in its glory. I'm very pleased with it. It's very, it looks very professionally done, doesn't it? I mean, I didn't make the pattern or anything. I'm just, I'm just simply the woman who's uh, done this. I mean, I put the hours in. <laughs> it's taken me ages. Um, and this one I started a bit earlier, thinking, oh, I won't be finishing it on the day then, because I was finishing it on the day for my auntie's one. And guess what? Here I am, finishing it on the day. So the, the frames I'm using are just the cheap, well, they're very, they're, they're cheap, but they don't look that cheap. So they're from B&M, and they're three pound for two frames, and they're the five by seven frames. They're called the Cuba frames. Um, and I bought a two pack of this. So the last time I did this, I put it in one of these, and then Jen's present is in one of these as well. Um, and then I'll have a sparesy for something else. So now I have to trim this to fit in here. Then I'll write in her card, and then I'll tie it all up. I don't actually know what time it is. Oh, it's 3.43. So once I've done that, I think I'll put the icing on the cake. That, you see, icing on the cake. We'll try the cake, and then maybe we'll have to start getting ready for tonight. So, yes, I think that's what I'll do. I've been listening to Taylor Swift's album, which I think is, well, it's just won a Grammy for Best Pop Idol. Oh, I, album, Best Pop Idol. Um, and it's, here we go. Um, uh, Midnight's, but it's like a certain version of it. I think she's re-recorded or something. I'm not au fait with Taylor Swift, but I'm really enjoying the album a lot. Um, so yeah, so now I feel like maybe I'm gonna get into a bit of Taylor Swift and I'm quite looking forward to the old album that's coming out in April. I'm trying to listen to a newish album every month. I did it last year. In January, I listened to Ray's album, 21st Century Blues, which I loved. And then, like I said, I've been listening to Midnight this month. Don't know what to listen to next month. People who listen to new music, where do you find out about new music? Just, just interested. Um, I don't really listen to the radio. I spend a lot of my time listening to audiobooks or podcasts. Um, as, or as I've been doing, I, I just needed, I was enjoying the audiobook very much, but I felt like I needed something to pep me. <laughs> so I needed something that was going to pep me up. Oh, look. So I just need to fit that in there nicely. So I need to trim it a little bit more on the edges. We were in Paris. So a little bit more trimming. And there's no risk for the wicked in terms of this because it's our friend's 10th wedding anniversary next year, uh, next week. We're going to a party. I actually can't believe that people I know have been married 10 years. Um, so I need to do them a cross stitch for that. I haven't really thought about what to do for that. That might be a bit more difficult. Just thinking about maybe doing a cross stitch for Kate and Alex's wedding anniversary. Day. Yeah. We're on a, a time for that, aren't we? We are on a time for that. Okay, she still needs to cut, she still needs to trim it down, guys. She's gonna love it. Yeah, do you think so? Yeah. She don't know what's going on half the time anyway. <laughs> oh, a fire engine's just left. Oh, exciting. Oh. Maybe not for some people. God, David's gutted he's missed out on some yep, drama around Town. the parts. Right, surely that's been trimmed down enough. Yeah. There we go. Put that in there like that. And then she can hang it up. And here we go. Ta da! Do you think she'll like it, David? Yeah, it looks cool, but yeah, that does look good. There we go. There we go. Happy 80th birthday. I'd imagine being 80. I doubt I'll get there. No. <laughs> I don't need to say that. Um, here we go. So I'm going to write in her birthday card now and then I'll ribbon it all together. Then I'll decorate the cake, David. And then I think maybe I'll start getting ready for this evening's events. Yeah. 
Yeah. What time we got to be there? Well, we got to be there at five to six. Oh, so I imagine right. we need to leave her about quarter to about six quarter just to, to be six. there with plenty of time. Yeah. Now we are making the orange mm. icing. Um, and it's topped with toasted hazelnuts. However, I haven't got any toasted hazelnuts. I suppose I could put some in the oven for a little bit just to toast them. Yeah, look. And I didn't also have um, ground hazelnuts, but I bought 100 grams there and um, blitz those to make ground hazelnuts and and toasting these ones apparently to make toasted hazelnuts <clears throat> but let's make the icing sugar first so we need 20 ml of orange juice and 100 grams of icing sugar and then we're just gonna <coughs> be all over so Grams of this in there. I've done, I feel like I've absolutely fogged you off in terms of a reading vlog today because there's going to be about five of these two, three, four, five, 98, a little bit more. Um, because, makes it taste nice. Um, yeah, I've done a little bit of listening to my audiobook. Read literally about a double page while I was eating my lunch before David came out and we were chatting. So yeah, but there will be more reading done when I get back. <coughs> In my throat, little. Um. So yeah, sod about that. But there'll be a bit more reading. Oh, I think. Yeah, it is. My juice is And then we're going to try it and we'll let you know what we think because we're eating dinner in two hours <laughs> so it'll be a very small try. Cake's finished! Like I said, finesse, not my strong point but I mean it looks a little bit like the picture. So orange and hazelnut cake done. Next week apple and pine cake now i need to go and get the pine nuts for this because i thought i'd bought the pine nuts turns out i hadn't i love pine nuts and i love apple cake so i've got very high hopes for this it says it's a lovely cake to make in the autumn but what about to make in the winter or my spring yeah and it's got cardamom in it excited right i'm gonna chop these into little squares and david and i can have a little taste of it maybe a cup of tea yeah a cup of tea too no, I've never used this mug before. Oh, what an unusual experience for us both. Here we are. All right. Cake o'clock. Oh, Orange and hazelnut. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for making it. I mean, it's already, lovely. it's lovely. Very yeah. good, aren't they? Yeah, it's very much reminds me of that. Mmm. There was a cake. My cousin Laura made. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. This was Bob. orange and phyllo pastry. And this mm. is orange. Mm, it's really nice. Orange in a cake really works. It's very nice and moist as well, I think, mm -hmm. because of the hazelnut. Your, There's ground your cakes are lovely every it. time. Well, I mean. It's like even that coffee cake, the actual cake, the texture is lovely. This is better than the... last week, is it? Of course it is. Yeah, we're doing very well at that book. Yeah. I don't feel like we've had a burden yet. Next week, apple and pine nut. Do you feel like you're enjoying baking more? Or is it a bit of a chore? It's so easy. It is easy, isn't it? I think it's that book. Mm. But. It's like when I made them cookies for my sister. I really enjoyed making them. And making some more tomorrow for Tom. <laughs> Yeah, this is well nice. Mm. Really good. Having those hazelnuts toasted does make the difference. Yeah, I think I think they need to be toasted. So yeah. Mm. Apple and pine nut next week. Yum. Well, I realised that most of the evening has slipped away, but um, we've been out for dinner and we're back. <laughs> 
we're not back as David had hoped at eight o'clock. <laughs> uh, we're back at half past nine. But yeah, yeah it was nice to be able to. I mean, it absolutely tipped it down on the right way back. So it was that wasn't that much of a nice walk back. But it was nice to be able to walk somewhere for dinner. And yeah, my nan was very surprised um, at having everybody there. So that was quite nice. But mm, I think I'm. Um, Go take some painkillers and go to bed. Oh, it feels a bit early to go to bed, doesn't it? It does feel quite early. But what But what else is someone supposed to do at, on a Friday night, David? Tell me. I don't really know. What am I supposed to do now with myself now I'm home? <laughs> I don't normally do this sort of thing. What are you going to do, David? Um, well, I mean, if you was going to stay up, I thought we could watch something. But if not, then I'll play. What is there to watch? Probably, I mean, I mean, you're still over an hour away from Graham. Over an hour away from Great. Oh, unless you want to watch you know, Great British Menu. Oh, yeah, we could watch that. You know, when I used to go out when I was a youngster, if I was ever home before Jonathan Ross had ended, I always used to think, what a lightweight I am. Because Jonathan Ross used to be on quite late, didn't it? It was like 10.35. Yeah. And sometimes it would go on till, like, almost midnight. Okay, well, I guess I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Hello. I've done quite a lot of cleaning. Um, David's made cookies and cleaned the fridge. I've cleaned in here and it just feels lovely. As it always does. Doesn't it always feel so nice? Um, but I thought, <laughs> well, I've been listening to Babel as well. So I reckon I will have that done tomorrow, which will mean I can have my plays. Um, Cause we're off out. Literally David's gonna have a shower and then we're gonna go. Um, Cause we're gonna go and pop in and see his parents and give them some of the cake we made yesterday. We've got a, we've bought a new um, microwave because our microwave is second hand anyway. So it was my sister's first. And they had it for many years and we've had it for about three years. And it's on death's door. So we've got another microwave, which we're going to go and pick up. Then we're going to Tom and Laura's for pizza party. Um, so yes, we've got a little bit of thing to do. But I thought, I mentioned that I would be starting. We picked this book yesterday, didn't we? So I thought, well, I, I need to start it. So, but... I finished when it was lunchtime at a bit of an awkward part, so I think I'm just going to read to this this bit, and then I'm going to start on that, hopefully, <laughs> before we go, because David's going to have a shower and then we're going to get ready to go, so, um, yeah, I'm going to do that now. And then at least I've started the book that I picked yesterday. Good morning, little pretty lady. Good morning, little baby. How are you today, Debbie? Are you nice? You don't often sit on the bed, do you? I feel exactly, case in point, case in point. Can she get on here without knocking the tripod over? Especially when the screen's up, that's added peril. Oh, David and I went for, not a long walk, but a walk yesterday with his sister and his mum and the dogsy. And um, it wasn't that long, but oh my God, my hips are just so painful. Um, so yeah, lovely pizza at Tom and Laura's last night. <clears throat> really, really lovely. And um, yeah, played Catan, which was also lovely. And I woke up this morning, Debbie's on the bed again. What are you doing? Come up here. She will not be, this used to be, if I did this, Minnie would be like, what is going on over there? I need to go and sit on here. But, She's just not like that. She's very much on her own terms. Anyway, it's half past 10. I've done a load of washing. I've read some book. I'm gonna read a little bit more book. I have emptied the bathroom, ready to cut uh, the ensuite, ready to clean the ensuite, but um, I wanted David to, to do the litter tray first. So I might get David to do the litter tray and then I'll, then I'll continue with the cleaning. He's watching a YouTube video at the moment, one of his favorite YouTubers. Um, has just put a vlog up of them going to centre parks and that like they're like his favourite videos ever <laughs> which is very cute um, so yeah so we're going to the cinema at 2 to watch The Iron Claw which I'm feeling a bit anxious is too strong a word but mm, just a bit uh, about it because I've heard it's very very sad if I'm being honest I'm not in the place for very very sad at the moment but there's literally nothing else on <laughs> that we haven't seen already. Oh, Daphne's just jumped, jumped up at the window because there's a bird outside making a noise. So hopefully it'll be okay. It's also two and a half hours of very, very sad. 
I'm always a bit worried that she'll get out. We've got the window open on a little crack, but I'm sure she What's out there, baby? Um, so yeah, and then we've got, quite looking forward to this, battered tofu with chips and mushy peas for dinner, like in a sort of like fish and chips type thing. And then obviously we've got the normal Sunday night of Call the Midwife. I'll probably do a little bit of, a little bit of cross-stitch, but I've got things to sort of finish. I want to get Babel finished so I can get my little prize out of the reading challenge. I'd quite like to finish this. I'm only, I'm on page 262 and it's 300 pages. So like under 40 pages of this left. Still got to clean the bathroom. I'm going to show you me using my new culture. I say new. It was my nan's. My nan died like seven years ago. Um, I think it's just been languishing in someone's um, garage since then. So I'm going to use that on my shower screen and have another, another clean out of the bathroom. So I'll show you me doing that. And I need to clean that, clean this situation here. I also, we popped in to see David's mum and dad yesterday and give them some of the cake. And David's mum and dad had been having a big sort out. And David's mum had been sorting out some of her clothes and she had some dresses and stuff to ask me, oh, it's just gone off, um, and not to ask me if I wanted them. And I've taken two of them and a pair of trainers, which are basically brand new. Um, and I'm so delighted with the pair of them. They're summer dresses, so I won't be wearing them yet, but <clears throat> as you may well know, I'm not buying any new clothes this year. Um, so yeah, to, so to get two pre-loved dresses from David's mum, very pleased with them. And they both are lovely. I say pre-loved, they haven't even been worn. So they're not new because they've come from somebody else. I haven't gone out and added to the fast fashion world. One of them's from Monsoon, one of them's from Tesco's, but yeah, I'll show you those a bit later on. Um, and yeah, I think maybe I'm just gonna do a little bit more reading and then we'll do a little bit of ensuite cleaning. I think so. I'd like to really finish this, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do a bit more weed. You right, Debbie? She's so beautiful. Here are the two dresses. This one from Monsoon, which has got this sort of detail. This is perfect because I was actually thinking, I don't think I've got a denim dress. A denim dress used to be a bit of a staple for me, um, but I don't think I got one that fits. Um, and then David's mum handed this one over to me yesterday. And um, I was like, oh, I don't know. It looked a bit maybe bigger for me around the waist, but it's not, it fits me perfectly. So lovely. Maybe wear it with a jumper underneath or a cardigan on top. Like spring into summer, winter into spring maybe. And then this one, which is just gorgeous. I think just looks so expensive considering it's from Tesco's. Um, this sort of, I mean, this is hugely spring, isn't it? I'm just thinking, oh, I've got anything to wear it to in the spring. Um, with this sort of like almost daffodil print, I would say, with the blues on and then the belt made out of the same material with this sort of tortoiseshell thing. This isn't my favourite line of, like, I'm not, I don't often have my, sh my shoulders out. Even in the summer, I wear like short sleeves or long sleeves. But um, yeah, I tried it on and I'm very pleased with a pair of them. So they're going in the old wardrobe. I'm just having a little sort out of, I've got piles of clothes down here where, where I haven't been thinking. Top, oh God. She's got the buckle from her dungarees car. I've just been dumping everything down there um, when it's come when I've when it's clean and I need to sort it and I need to empty this hot water bottle that's been there since Wednesday. So yeah, just sorting through some clothes and listening to well, I've just listened to Like Minded Friends podcast and I'm about to listen to The Wolf for now and then. I'll do the bathroom because I still haven't got as far as the bathroom yet. David's got to change the litter tray. He's going to put some clothes away. Yeah, just a few little pottering, pottering jobs. I'm going to go and empty this now, bye. Clothes away. It's time to mop my shower, which is something that I found more recently discovered. I can detach these and wash them in the washing machine. So I can not only just mop my floor, I can also mop my shower, which takes a lot of the effort away. So I put in here, Hot water. That's the remains of the kettle from the teas this morning. One tiny little pump of dish soap because we don't want it to be too sticky. And vinegar. That's probably enough vinegar actually. And I can refill that up. 
I'm going to use that to do the. Is that hot enough? No, we're near hot enough. I'm going to use that to do the walls and the floor of the shower. And then once I've done that, I'll use it to use to do the, the, the mop the floor. Yeah, so it's, it's quite foamy already just from one squirt of dish soap, which I get from Minimal because it comes in this recyclable glass bottle, uh, which I will, so once I've stopped using the Minimal ones, I've got one here that I've had for ages that I can refill in here because it makes it go so much longer if you've got a little pump on it. So even if you don't have this, like to use a hand wash or something to put your, to decant it into, you just don't use as much as when you go, in fact, I'm thinking of getting one of these for work because people are very guilty of. <clears throat> right, that's heating up a bit now, so let's get some water in there. Ow! And then I'm going to do that, and then that's when the old karcher will get used. Here we go. This mop I've got as well. I can't believe how much. Maybe next time I'll do it with half a uh, half a squirt of washing up liquid. This mop's also got a like a salad spinner function on it, so it really dries it off. But yes, yeah, so we go in and we mop the things with this clean one. And it's just so much easier than scrubbing and getting up on stuff. I do the doors because <coughs> I need the water to come off with the cart chuck because that's what oh finishes it. Look at that. So much easier. So much easier. when I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spin this because I want that on the thing so I might, I might spin it I might spin it once just so it's not drenched but we're gonna do it on the screen so that it's wet move to make so David's just gone out it's the Super Bowl tonight and David's booked tomorrow off of work and he's gonna stay up and watch the Super Bowl tonight and then not have to get up for work in the morning so he's gone out to get himself some snacks chicken wings apparently at the top of the list of things he's got to get um, and it's Valentine's Day on um, Wednesday now you might know that David and I are being a bit more inventive with our gifts this year not just to each other to, to our friends and family and making a lot of them and repurposing things and things like that in order to save a bit of money um, and I'd like to do him a bookmark he's been very busy making bookmarks for other people but I think I'd like to make him a bookmark or failing that I found these yesterday so these are things that I um, cross stitch for my sister 
many years ago and she was in her old house which she hasn't been in for years um, they're like fairy tale figureheads so like a bunny with stag ears unicorn and uh, a frog with a little uh, crown on she doesn't want them anymore so I thought well these are quite cute these are much smaller than the ones we've ordinarily got David bought a job lot from the internet and they were big ones but I thought oh I could either do him a little something in this or in, in one of these or do him a bookmark but he's out at the cinema tomorrow night with his dad watching the holdover so I'll have a bit more time but I thought if I just get an idea of what I want to do today then at least I can start it tomorrow. And he bought me this book for Christmas. I think actually Daphne bought me this book for Christmas, but it's got loads and loads of little cute things in it. So I thought one little cute thing in here might be quite a cute little, like as in like a love hearty type thing. Maybe there's a Valentine's Day section, I don't know. But whilst I'm doing that, I'm gonna listen to uh, today's piece of music from the Year of Wonder. Um, today's date is the 11th of February, just while I'm having a little sort out. And then once I've listened to that, I'll go back to uh, listening to my audiobook. So the 11th of February, it's a long one, it's always a long bit of writing. The next one is literally one line, but this is the 11th of February and the piece of music we're going to be listening to is Nocturne for Violin and Piano by Lily Boulanger. And I think this is continuing about um, female composers because the piece we listened to last week was also a female composer. Somebody mentioned that all of these pieces of music are on a list, uh, on a playlist on Spotify. So that's where I'm going to get it from today um, in order that they, they are. So um, hopefully you guys will be able to find that easily. So here we go. So this is Nocturne for Violin and Piano by Lily Boulanger. It said, the prejudice against female composers until comparatively recently makes the achievements of the Boulanger sisters, Nadia, born on the 22nd of October, and Lily even more remarkable. Growing up in a musical family, they entered the Paris Conservatoire at a young age, where their teachers included Gabrielle Four. Uh, Nadia went on to have an extraordinary career as a teacher, shaping some of the 20th century's greatest musical minds, from conductor and pianist Daniel Barenboim and tango pianist pioneer Asta Piazzolla to Philip Glass and legendary pop producer Quincy Jones, I've heard that name. Lily was a prodigious composing talent. Age 19, she became the first woman to win the coveted Prix de Rome for comp composition. That led immediately to a deal with one of the leading music publishing houses of the day, Ricordi. A glittering future beckoned, but within five years she would be dead, her life cut short by intestinal tuberculosis, which is known these days as Crohn's disease. Lily published around 30 pieces before her death. Written in the Impressionist style, this nocturne contains a hauntingly beautiful violin melody, as well as the quotations from Prelude à l'après-médie du un fawn, but lovely pronunciation, hasn't she got, by Claude Debussy, you've already heard of Claude Debussy, and Tristan and Indesolde by Richard Wagner. And yet, while she openly acknowledged her influences, this piece remains intensely personal. It was on this day in 1929 that the French-Russian astronomer named Benjamin Joukowsky discovered a minor planet, a dark asteroid from the middle of the asteroid belt. He named it 1181 Lilith in her honour. As more memorials go, it's not the worst. That does sound great. So let's listen to Nocturne for violin and piano, but I'm going to get the playlist. So if I just type in Year of Wonder, that should come up, shouldn't it? Year of Wonder. There we go, classical music. Oh no, this is the book. So I don't need to listen to the book. I need the playlist. Year of Wonder, February. Perfect. There's what we listened to last time. So we're looking for Nocturne. Nocturne, Lily Belonger. Perfect. There we go. Three minutes, so I'll just have a little browse through my book while I'm listening to this. Well, that's lovely. And I've decided what I'm doing, so it's all come together. I will say about all of these pieces of music, all of them seem quite melancholy. I'm not, like, there's none I'm like, oh, that was really jolly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, none of them feel very jolly to me. So quite keen to, to get to some jolly stuff. Jolly good stuff. Um, but yeah, so I've decided what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a little go of it now. So David's favourite food, well he's got two favourite foods, one's burger and one's pizza, but he loves chips as well and he loves Dr Pepper. So I thought I would do a trio of cola, chips and either burger or pizza. I think the burger is cuter, but the pizza, yeah, I mean they've already done the pizza there so I can see what it looks like. Um, burger, chips and a cola, I think I'll do that and do it in like, would do do. So burger, cola, chips. Yeah, and a lot of these colours I would have started with. So I'm gonna just make a go of it. I mean, I don't think he's gonna be too long, but I can literally chuck it in here when he gets back and then tomorrow night finish it when he's at the cinema. 
isn't that a lovely little present and you can put it i've got a little we've got a little wooden frame that we can put it on next to his bed i think that will be very nice and he will like that i would like that if he had my favorite foods on there which are probably also chips <laughs> um cool right okay so let's start with red have i got the red out no thing is, is that we're running out of things to i've been making stuff to hold the thread on with like the tops of so that's the top of a lindor box from christmas this was the top of another box and i'm running out of them we, we had some of these i mean you, that's all you need but i don't know if i've got any cardboard anywhere um when we bought we got these sort of little plastic things that you can wrap your thread around and write the number on but we've run out of those now oh no maybe there was another although let me have a look and see if we've got any of these colors that i can get no i don't think we have no 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 right okay so i'm gonna have to start a red i'm gonna have to well red's probably a good place to start because it's a lot no, I'm just talking to myself here, so I will um, see you a bit later on. Bye. Oh, I was going to say I'll keep my voice down because David's having a nap before the Super Bowl tonight. It's 10 o'clock at night, by the way, and he's chosen now to have his nap to get him ready for the Super Bowl, which I think starts at like 11, so maybe I should wake him. Um, but I think I've just heard him wake up, so I'll let him get up on his own time. I'm here to wrap up the vlog. Congrats for me. I have finished Babel. Um, I just finished it while I was doing another cross stitch this is for my friends kate and alex who are celebrating their 10 year wedding anniversary um i'm gonna write the date that they got married in between these two little birdies holding this scroll and then i'm gonna do some little bits around it that they've done since then um so they visited canada for instance they visited wales um they've had two children um so i thought i'd put like little flags around maybe some balloons with their children's initials in and things like that I've got to have it done by Saturday, <laughs> Saturday night, so it seems to be quite the thing that I'm doing is setting myself these things that take ages um, with only a limited amount of time, but that's what I was doing while I was listening to the end of Babel. Absolutely loved it, loved it even more this time round. Um, thought it was honestly magnificent. Um, I love the campus aspect of it, I love the fact that it's got really important themes in there, the character development's amazing, the plot moves along just expertly. Yeah, absolutely loved it. Would highly recommend it. Lo loved it. Loved Yellow Face. I read Babel first last year, about this time last year actually, and then was excited about Yellow Face coming on, coming out because I loved Babel so much. And ever since I've read Babel, I've said, oh, that's one of the books that I would love to read again for the first time. And um, I thought in order to do that, I'd listen to the audiobook of it. And yeah, absolutely loved it. Top. So since then, literally in the bath now, I've just listened to on Borrow Box, uh, the first three minutes of uh, Dawn French, The Twat Files. Um, I'm a very big fan of Dawn French and I love her sort of anecdotes and things like that. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And I also started reading A Lady's Guide to Fortune Hunting by Sophie Irwin because I finished Family Meal when we were at the cinema. Oh yeah, we went to watch um, The Iron Claw. It was just um, proper, I feel bad by saying this because it is inspired by a true story, but like an absolute downer of a story. It was just misery after misery after misery. I've not read A Little Life, but I've heard that's what A Little Life's like. So if you like that, maybe you'd like this. But yeah, literally, I was just waiting for the next, like, all right, spoiler, person to die um, or the next bad thing to happen. Um, David quite enjoyed it. It's, uh, amongst that, there's wrestling and stuff like that. Zac Efron did put on a good performance. Um, but yeah, it was just a bit too... I didn't even feel sad by it. I just felt like proper bummed out. <laughs> so um, yeah, fashion was great there and the soundtrack was good. Um, so yeah, then we came home, had like tofu fish and chips. So like tofu and it, had been, it was in a batter that was a bit like, well, it was made out of Marmite and stuff. So it was quite nice. Uh, and then what's called The Midwife, which is also proper downer at the moment. My favorite characters, Matthew and Trixie, are having some marital and monetary issues and their lives are a bit of a bummer at the moment as well so yeah dawn dawn french will cheer me up though so i'm gonna answer the questions i get my little prize because i finished well we'll get to that in a minute um 
and then I'm going to do a little bit more cross stitching because it's 10 o'clock um, and then I'll go to bed and probably read a little bit more. I'll wake David up. David's got like chicken wings and stuff to make for when he's watching the uh, the Super Bowl tonight, which I think goes on for like four hours. Um, so that's all going to be happening when I'm going to sleep. Nice stench of chicken cooking. Right, so the question to answer was, oh and Daphne's up there being all cute. The question to answer was, is there a book you've never read but tell people you have why? So not now, no, because I feel like I've answered a similar question to this before, maybe when I've done like a bookish Q&A or something. But when I was younger, and it's a book that I own and would like to read, um, I did A-level English. Um, so if you're in the UK, maybe not even UK, if you're in England, when I was like 17 or 18, you did things called AS levels, um, which built upon, which went to an A-level. So they're like sort of like a two-year course and my AS levels I studied Hard Times by Charles Dickens which I very much enjoyed which is weird because it's a miserable tale but I very much enjoyed studying it and I feel like maybe the reason I enjoyed studying it is because one of the first classics I read and understood and I was like I actually get this and I could the like all the sort of imagery and character like I could I could get it and I could chat about it and I knew what I was talking about so maybe that's why I enjoyed it so that was my first year my AS level and then when I did my A level we were supposed to read North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell and then compare and contrast the the two. And I never read North and South. I read bits of it, but I never read the whole thing. I read the York Notes of North and South, which are like study guides that are here. But I never read North and South. So I don't suppose I have ever told people I read. Well, I told my English teacher I read it. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Lone. Um, and told the people that were marking my A-level paper that I'd read it. But yeah, is there a book you've never read but tell people you have why? So yeah, I never read North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell um, the whole way through. And the reason, and I didn't tell people, and the reason I didn't read it, well, I think I just thought there were more things important. I probably had like loads of 18th birthday parties to go to at the weekend and I'd rather do that than read North and South. But now I'm very excited to read North and South. I own it and uh, it got put on many of my TBRs last year and I just never got around to it. So hopefully this year will be the year that I read it. But there we go. But I'm interested to hear if there are any books that you've never read but tell people that you have. Daphne's listening to me so nicely. She sat up there with a nice little pause out. Oh no, I need to leave that out. I need to write the question down so that it's all inserted beautifully here for you. Right, okay, let me take my little let me take my little treat and then we'll finish on the poem. So my little tweet. My, oh, I can do it that way. My little tweet was read a book by an author whose work you have loved before. So I finished Babel um, and I have definitely loved that work before. I loved that very book before and I loved Yellow Face as well. So that is what I've got. I'm going to take this off because that's what I've been doing. And then I'm going to reuse these little bags. Oh, I've just heard David's alarm go off. So he obviously only set himself a little alarm for a little bit. Um, I wonder if I'll be up for any of the for any of the Super Bowl. I have no idea about um, American football. I really do not know. I wouldn't even be able to tell you how they score a goal, <laughs> or if it is even called a goal, a point. You know, we'll do that at a later date so you don't have to sit through. So the prize I've got, I said it felt like a pin. Let's have a look. Oh, it is a pin and it's gorgeous. It says, do more of what makes you happy. By And the quote is from Carmel McConnell and it's all in this sort of like rainbow print. Do, go on show, go up. Yeah, look, do more of what makes you happy. That is so nice. Oh, thanks, Jen. Jen. Jen made me this lovely set of, uh, oh, I'm going to look forward to it. So what I've been doing is I've been wearing the thing that I got in the last uh, reading vlog, in the next reading vlog, so you will see me wearing this next week. Lovely. So it is the 11th of February. Let's have a look at the poems we've got for today. So we've either got Mix a Pancake by Christina Rossetti, it's Pancake Day this Tuesday, or Shrove Tuesday by, uh, by Celia Warren. Um, well, I mean, yeah, so something that we celebrate here in England. Is it a religious thing? 
I think it might be, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Oh, here we go. Well, I'm going to read Mix a Pancake by Christina Rossetti because on Shrove Tuesday, we eat pancakes. It's otherwise known as Pancake Day. That's certainly how I refer to it. Shrove Tuesday, also known as Pancake Day, is the final day of the beginning of the Christian period of Lent. It is something to do with Christianity. Shrove comes from the word shrive, which means to absolve. For Christians, the 40 days of Lent are a time of fasting and penitence in memory of Jesus' 40 days in the desert. Shrove Tuesday, however, is the final day of feasting on rich, tasty food. In France, it's even known as Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday. Yeah, I've got a feeling now I remember learning from school is that on Shrove Tuesday, people were using up like the last of their eggs and milk and sugar to make these pancakes. Here we go. The, the poem goes thusly. Mix a pancake, stir a pancake, pop it in the pan, fry the pancake, toss the pancake, catch it if you can. Short but sweet, and I will look forward to my pancake on Tuesday. So there we go. That is it for this Friday reading vlog. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and I will see you all again soon for another picture video. Goodbye.